I'm a human resources professional and I strongly believe in experiential learning. So when I was asked to talk about graduate employability, of course I reflected on my own experience. And I, so I thought, how did I end up here in this job, 12 years working in HR that I love? How was I lucky enough to find something that I love? It started there. I walked into the guidance counsellor's office of my school and Mr Murphy, a very lovely elderly gentleman, went to his Mission Brown filing cabinet and he pulled out a manila folder full of questionnaires, all delicately photocopied on something like this, and he told me to fill it out. So I took it home and I filled it out and I took it back. And he sat down with his little checklist and he told me that I was good with people and there was a recommended list of jobs, ranging from teacher through to HR person. And I said, oh, well, HR sounds good. Very good. So I did my QTAC preferences and here I am. Before SEEK, there was a newspaper, is everyone familiar with this, that advertised jobs. And what I noticed when I looked through HR jobs, I wasn't just looking for graduate jobs. I wanted to know what does HR mean in the workforce? And what I noticed was that HR was not just human resources, it was human resources plus workplace health and safety, plus training and development, plus return to work coordination for people who have been in workplace injuries. At my university, there was a business faculty, there was a science faculty, workplace health and safety and business were on different campuses. We use the word silo a lot, but there was definitely a silo there. So when I went to my university, I went looking for opportunities to learn more about health and safety. Now the business faculty couldn't help me. But I was fortunate enough to meet someone who was in workplace health and safety doing a business subject and they said, go and talk to the people at this other campus. So, okay, so I found the bus timetable and, okay, I've got to go 10K somewhere else. Well, here I go on the bus. But I was so fortunate that I did because what I found there was that I could get a certificate called a workplace health and safety officer certificate. And back in 1999, it was a requirement of legislation that if you employed more than 30 people in your workplace, you had to have a huzo on staff. So I did that certificate. When I graduated, I had my bachelor's degree, I had that huzo cert, and I had two other training development certifications that were all practical. So I was very, I thought very fortunate to have done that because I was lucky enough to gain a national HR graduate position. What they didn't say in the advertising was that they would love that person to run their health and safety committee. They thought there's no point. So when I walked in with my bachelor's degree and this who's those certificate, they're like, yes, pick her. So why bring this to the table? What ideas have I generated from my own experience? The first thing is, and I think it's timely because our education at university is going to cost us a lot more in the future, thanks to some deregulation. I think that even now today, a student can gain quite a number of qualifications by doing their degree. So certain coursework will give you a practical certificate to go alongside your degree, but people don't advertise them. Right now I'm in the market for a master's degree, I'm very selective about where I go, I read everything I can, no one mentions anything about practical applications, practical certificates. The other thing is that I don't believe that there is any more discussion between faculties now than what there was 10 years ago. I think one of the biggest roadblocks in HR is that universities have stopped offering public liability insurance for unpaid work experience. About five years ago, if a student came to me and said, Kieran, I really want to do work experience, I'd say, great. Someone from the university would contact me, I'd fill out a form, they'd get their public liability, they'd come along, they'd do their work experience. Right now, today, that doesn't happen anymore. If a student goes and finds their own work experience that's not part of the university program, they often won't cover it. So my first suggestion, and I really beg universities, is to offer their public liability more freely. The other thing is career development seems to only really focus at the end of the degree, how to write a letter, what to wear to a job interview, what to say, what not to say. But I, I'm afraid that that sort of advice is a little bit too little too late. What I really want to see, and the words emotional intelligence have been talked about a lot, and I work in this space and I do EI coaching, and what I notice is that there's four quadrants, obviously, 
in your EI profile and there's a number of attributes. What I want people to do is work out what their natural strengths are. What are your strengths and your preferences? What's your time management style? Everyone has one. What do your personality endear you to do better than other people? And I want that to happen at high school. I don't want people to get a photocopy questionnaire. I want them to get a real in-depth understanding of themselves. And that should dictate what sort of career they want to be in. When you look at an AI profile, one of the rarest skills is conflict. The ability to manage and deal with the stress of conflict. So if you knew that about yourself, you might pick a particular degree. And that might make you a rare commodity. Ultimately, I want people to do things that play to their strength from an early age because what I see is that someone comes into a, a career and they do, it doesn't quite work out, it doesn't fit. They think, oh, maybe it's, maybe it's I just don't like working here. So I go and find another job somewhere else and it still doesn't quite work for me. By the time someone hits 25, 28, they're thinking, actually, I'm in the wrong job. I didn't pick the right job for me. And the unfortunate thing about being 25 and 28 is you probably by then have a mortgage, probably have family. I see lots of people feeling like they're stuck, stuck where they don't belong without any choices because they didn't understand themselves when they thought about what am I going to do for the rest of my life. And that their choices become infinitely more limited by financial commitment. Ultimately, all I want when I look at a graduate is someone who's happy. Someone who has picked something that because it's for them. And if that graduate choice and coming into that particular career is an achievement of a goal, something that they have stri driven to do, then they will be infinitely more happy.